Let's solve two problems on collision. Here is the first one. A 9 kg monkey jumps with a horizontal speed of 10 meters per second onto a stationary 1 kg skateboard. With what speed do the monkey and the skateboard move together? Neglect the friction between the skateboard and the ground. So let's look at what is given to us first. Maybe we'll draw a diagram for that. Then we'll gather the data. We'll see what is asked. And then maybe we'll come up with a strategy to solve that. Okay, so let's first go ahead and look at what's given to us. We're given that a monkey is jumping onto a skateboard. So here's our picture. So this is our monkey. It's gonna jump on that skateboard and then they'll start moving together. What data is given to us? Let's look at that now. We know the weight of that monkey. We know the mass of that monkey is nine kilograms. We also know the mass of that skateboard is one kilogram. So let's put down these masses. I'm not going to write those individually, that data individually to save space. I'm just writing it on, on this picture. And we are also given, what else? We are given that the monkey jumps with the horizontal speed of 10 meters per second. So this monkey has a speed of 10 meters per second. And the skateboard is stationary. So the skateboard initially is at rest. Now what we need to find out, what do we have to calculate? With what speed do the monkey and the skateboard move together? So that means after jumping on that skateboard, we need to figure out what is the speed with which they move together. So their combined speed is what we need to calculate. So how do we solve this problem? Where do we even start? Well, I guess the most important clue that we can get over here is that this is a problem on collision. And whenever bodies are colliding, their total momentum before collision should always equal their momentum after the collision. And so that's where we can start. And just to make that statement a little bit more clear before we start solving, what's collision? Well, in physics, whenever objects put a force on each other for a short time, we say they're colliding. For example, when the monkey jumps on this skateboard, it puts a force on that skateboard. It pushes that skateboard forward, which is what accelerates the board. And during the same time, the board pushes back on monkey, Newton's third law. But these forces only last for a short time, after which they both start moving with a constant velocity. And therefore, that's a collision. And momentum is conserved. And another important thing is that momentum is only conserved provided there are no external forces. If there are other objects besides these two that start pushing on them, say say the ground starts pushing on them, then the momentum will not be conserved. It's for that reason it's mentioned in the problem, neglect friction. And if you're wondering, well, what about gravity? Isn't that an external force? Well, yeah, but we don't have to worry about gravity because it's being balanced. For example, if you consider the gravitational force acting on this monkey downwards, that's being balanced by an upward push given by the, the, the skateboard. And so the forces cancel out and we don't have to worry about them. So if you neglect friction, there are no other external forces. And so we can say the momentum is conserved. And of course, if you need more clarity on these things, then we've talked a lot about them in previous video uh, called conservation of momentum. So you can go always go back and refer to that. All right, now I think we can start the problem and we'll start by saying that the total initial momentum, which we'll write as PI, should equal the total final momentum, momentum after the collision. Now we know how to calculate momentum, right? We just multiply mass and the velocity. So all we have to do is calculate the initial momentum of the monkey plus that of the skateboard and equate it to the final momentum of the monkey and the skateboard and then see if we can calculate that velocity. So you know what, great idea to give it a shot yourself. Pause the video and see if you can first try this yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. So what's the initial momentum? Well, that's the initial momentum of the monkey, which is the mass of that monkey. I will use big size letters for monkey and I'll use small size letters for the skateboard. I'll also use different colors for them. So. That's gonna be mass of that monkey into the initial velocity of that monkey plus mass of that skateboard into the initial velocity of that skateboard. This is the total initial momentum. And that should equal its total final momentum. What's that? Again, that's gonna be mass of that monkey into 
the final velocity of that monkey. Notice the final velocity is same for both of them because they're moving together. Plus the mass of that skateboard, mass of that skateboard into the final velocity of that skateboard. And before we substitute, since V is common because they're going with the same velocity, we can pull that V out and write it as the total mass M plus M into V. And now we can plug in, we have all the data and we can plug in. So let do, let's do that over here. The mass of the monkey is nine kilograms, so that's gonna be nine kilograms, times U, which is 10 meters per second, plus the initial velocity of our skateboard is zero, because initially it was at rest. So the, this whole thing goes to zero. So that's our left-hand side. This is our total initial momentum. That should equal, let's look at the right-hand side. It is M plus M, that is the mass of the monkey plus the mass of that skateboard, which is nine plus one, which is 10. So let's use a neutral color for that. Say so 10 kilograms, the total mass, times V, which we need to calculate. We need to calculate. And look, we can now calculate what V is doing some algebra. So the 10 divides out and a kilogram cancels, and we are done. V will equal nine, and the units left out is meters per second, and that's our answer. So once the monkey jumps on that skateboard, they both take off with a speed of nine meters per second. All right, let's solve one more. Can you pause and try and first solve this yourself? Do it the same way, first figure out what is given, maybe draw a diagram, collect all that data, and then see if we can somehow solve this problem. All right, let's see what's given. We have a two kilogram toy truck moving at four meters per second, is about to collide with a one kilogram toy car moving at 17 meters per second in the opposite direction. Find their combined velocity after collision if they stick to each other. So we have two toys coming in the opposite direction. So here's a diagram. And so we have a toy truck and a car moving towards each other, and then they collide and stick to each other, which means after collision, they will move together. And we need to figure out with what speed and direction will they be moving together. So we know their masses. We're given the truck weighs two kilogram and the car has a mass of one kilogram. We also know their initial velocities. The truck is coming in at four and the car is coming in at 17 in the opposite direction. And we need to find what their combined velocity is after the collision. Okay, where do we start? Again, because this is a collision problem, we can start the same way we did before. We can say the total momentum of the car and that truck before collision should equal the total momentum after the collision. And again, just like before, because both of them have the same final velocity, we have pulled that V out from that equation. Now all we need to do is plug in these values and calculate what V is. So if you couldn't do this before, can you pause this one more time and see if you can do it from here? And remember, these two are coming in the opposite direction, so please take care of that. Again, give it a try. All right, let's substitute. So the mass of that truck is two kilogram into the initial velocity of that truck is four meters per second. Plus, this time this object is not at rest, it's moving. Its mass is one kilogram. And now comes the important part. Can we say its velocity is 17 meters per second? No, we can't. The main reason is velocities are direction sensitive. So if this velocity is to the right and we are taking that as positive, this velocity is in the opposite direction. So if this is positive direction, we should call this negative. And that's very important, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. So this is negative. Okay, when things are in the opposite direction, remember one velocity is positive, one is negative. And that should equal their total mass which is M plus M, that is just three kilograms, into V. And now if we simplify this particular equation, 
which I'm pretty sure you can do. So I leave that thing to you just to save time. We will get V equal to, if we simplify that, minus three meters per second. And again, you can pause and just verify that you get that answer. And that's our answer. And so this means after collision, they start moving with the speed of three meters per second. But what does that minus sign mean? Well, it's telling us about the direction. You see, since we took this as positive and we took this as negative, that means we chose the right side velocity as positive and left side velocity as negative. That's what we did. And since we're getting a negative answer, this now means that this whole thing will start moving to the left. If we had gotten a positive answer, it would have meant the whole thing is going to the right. Okay, so the final answer not only gives us the speed, but it also tells us in which direction the whole thing is moving. And so whenever we have problems with collisions, we can always start with momentum conservation.